hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to show you how i achieved this color and this cut this is the first time i've ever done a cut like this before so i'm basically going to be showing you guys everything that i did if you're not already subscribed please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified for when i upload my videos and let's jump straight into the video so i'm going to be using 20 volume and 40 volume developer the reason why i'm using 20 and 40 is because i actually wanted to use a 30 but i didn't have 30 and i had 20 and 40 so i mixed both of them equal parts of both to get a 30 volume developer so following this the instructions on the hair color i'm using you're supposed to mix 2.4 ounces of developer to 1.2 ounces of the color i'm using the l'oreal high color so i have two boxes of the high color highlights and one color of the regular high color in sizzling copper h7 so again two highlights box colors and one regular color in sizzling copper h7 so like I said, 2.4 volumes of developer. So I'm mixing, I'm eyeballing it about 1 to 1.2 um, ounces of 40 and 1 to 1.2 ounces of 20 to get about 2.4 ounces of 30 volume developer. So I poured in the 40 volume first, so now I'm just pouring in the 20 volume. As you can see, I'm doing two bowls with two mixtures. So basically, one bowl is going to have the high color highlights, and the other bowl is just going to have the regular high color sizzling copper. So as you can see, I'm starting with the high color highlights first. So I'm just going to be emptying everything in that tube into that bowl of the 13 volume developer. The high color tube was so difficult to press, like to get all the color out. I had to really, really press it with force because the tube is a little more stiff compared to the regular um, high color H7. So I'm just mixing all of that. Please be careful when you're mixing and don't spill it everywhere like I'm doing. <laughs> So now I'm going to do the bowl for the regular sizzling copper, the regular H7. As you can see, this one has a white cream and um, it was much easier to get all the um, cream out of the tube to press it out. And it also comes with a red copper pigment that you also add to the mixture. So you just basically add everything to the bowl and mix everything together. This reminds me of when I'm making starch, when you pour the palm oil inside the white starch and you mix everything together. <laughs> But yeah, um, so I have two bowls, one with the regular sizzling copper and the other with the highlight copper. On the left is a video of when I originally did a roller set with this wig. I actually have a tutorial on that. I'm going to link it at the top if you guys want to see the previous tutorial when I did a roller set on this wig. But as you can see right now, I'm just applying the color. So I apply the highlight color first, saturate the hair with the highlight color first. Then apply a little bit of the sizzling copper, the regular sizzling copper on top of that. The reason why I apply the um, highlight color first before I apply the regular sizzling copper on top is because I didn't want it to be too dark. In the L'Oreal high color line, the highlight colors are brighter, significantly brighter than the regular colors. So if I had just applied only the sizzling copper, you would have barely been able to see the difference. It would have been so dark. So I have done it before. That's why I know. So that's why I'm mixing both the highlight color and the sizzling copper. I'm putting the highlight color first and then putting a little bit of the sizzling copper on top just to tone down the brightness of the highlight color. So as I'm applying the color, like I said, highlight color first and then the sizzling copper on top. I'm massaging it into the hair and then you can start to see the actual curl pattern of this wig. I was actually going for a reverse ombre look so at the very top front part of the wig I used only the highlight color I didn't use any of the sizzling copper I only used the highlights at the top so that the top will be significantly brighter than the bottom you guys see how it looks after I wash out all the color so two boxes of um your for this wig i needed two boxes of the highlight color because the highlight color is very thick so you're going to need two boxes to spread it around the entire hair and make sure that you're coating all the strands and if you're doing the um ombre or if you're trying to make some parts darker than the other you will need about two boxes of the highlight color and one box of the regular sizzling copper so that it goes around the entire head of hair yeah, obviously if the wig you're working on is longer then you buy more um, hair color but that's just I use three boxes two highlights one regular sizzling copper so after applying everything I'm just going to let it sit for I let it sit for about an hour you don't have to leave it that long but I just left that long because I was doing stuff then I went out and shampooed the hair conditioned the hair and yeah I'm gonna show you guys how it looked when I was done 
so this is how the color came out as you can see the top is brighter than the bottom because I used only the highlight color at the top I absolutely loved how this color came out and as you can see the back isn't dark at all it's still a bit bright even though it's not as bright as the top that's because I will I um, mix the highlights and the sizzling copper if I had used only the sizzling copper the back would have still looked very almost black so yeah this is the color I achieved and I absolutely love how this color came out and the hair took the color amazingly well so now we're going to start doing the cut I'm about to start sectioning out the hair for how we're going to cut so we're doing a tapered cut and after watching a couple of videos I have never done this cut before in my life it's my first time I was literally winging it from the stuff I watched in videos so you're supposed to cut out a top portion of the hair or you can if you're doing this on your own hair just cut up a top portion of your hair and keep it out make sure that it is centralized so make sure that your wig is also centralized on your head sitting well in place because however you section out the hair is how you're going to cut it so you want to make sure that the wig is sitting properly on your head then you're going to do a side piece part it down to the back of your ear on one side and do the same thing to the other side so now that I'm done sectioning I'm going to take the wig off and put it on the mannequin head because I'm going to cut on the mannequin head so for the back portion that we didn't section off, I'm going to take vertical sections and hold it horizontally straight and cut at an angle. You don't want to cut it straight, cut it at an angle so that it's tapered so that the bottom is shorter than the top. Just take a vertical piece, hold it straight and cut it at an angle. Do not cut it straight up, cut it at an angle. I'm just coming closer so you guys see what I mean. Hold it horizontally straight and then cut at an angle so that the bottom is shorter than the top. So that's what I'm just going to do for the entire back that we didn't section off. So as you can see, it's starting to have a really nice shape now. The top is fuller than the bottom. That's the shape that we're going for. So I'm, I just, just have the sides left to do. And once again, I'm holding it and cutting it at an angle. Oh, do it on one side and do the same thing to the other side So I'm gonna release the top portion and see how everything looks together just arrange it and find out where I need to trim some more So obviously I need to trim the sides because they're a little too long. I need to trim pieces at the back yeah, so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and start trimming so that everything meshes well together Then I'm going to put the wig on my head as well to see how it looks on my head and know where I'm trimming Sometimes the way it looks on mannequin might be different from how it looks on your head So you want to make sure that you put the wig on your head and see how it's looking and trim some more if you need to So that's what I'm just gonna do now. I still need to take off quite a bit from the wig so I'm just going to keep on trimming okay so right now I'm just brushing it and I'm going to stop trimming because this is not the final form I'm going to be wearing this wig in I'm going to be wearing this wig when it's in its curly state so I'm going to stop trimming here and um, go ahead and define the curls in the wig and see how it's looking and do my final trimming when it is defined because you want to do your final trimming when it is in the states that you're going to be wearing the wig in since I'm going to be wearing this wig mostly in its curly states I'm going to do my final trimming when it's in its curly state so right now I'm just defining the curls taking some water spraying it on the wig and using Uncle Funky's Daughter Curly Magic to define the curls it's a really really nice gel since I don't normally use gels on my own natural hair because I don't really have curls in my hair to define I use this gel whenever I'm defining curls on wigs it's not going to dry out the curls so if you have type 3 hair or even 4a hair um, I definitely recommend this gel for you it's very good at defining curls it's not going to leave your hair crunchy it's not going to leave your hair dry it's just going to give you a really nice shiny hold so as you can see the method I'm using to define the curls at the top is that I'm twirling the curl around my finger so that it hangs nicely and I'm just going piece by piece and twirling the curl around my finger with the gel and the water 
so after doing that i'm just going to let it sit and dry and i'm going to come and show you guys what it looks like after the wig is dry so this is how the wig looks when it's dry i've actually put it on my head and trimmed a little bit but i didn't have to trim too much actually so that was good i didn't cut a lot when it was in its fluffy state so yeah this is how the wig looks and i'm just gonna go pop it on my head and show you guys the finished look so yeah this is the final result this is the first time i've ever done this cut and this color on a wig before so i was so nervous but i just wanted to experiment and do something different so that's how i came up with this and i've always wanted to do a tapered cut but my hair is too long to do that so it's great that i have the option of trying that with a wig this wig is from her given hair it's absolutely versatile i've used it to do a roller set before you can style it in so many different ways the wig is amazing quality generally the hair from her given hair is always good quality they've never disappointed me before that's why i've been working with them for this long so yeah let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section don't forget to like comment subscribe and share you can subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button down below or my face on the screen also don't forget to watch my other um hair videos and also don't forget to check the description box for the links to where you can get this wig i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys